Welcome back. This is Dreamhack Winter Grand Prix. We are just uh, before the second semi final, and the two players preparing for this match are Purple. And who is second, Raven? It's going to be Green Sheep. Yeah, and joining us here at the desk is Orange from Archon. Orange, how, how do you feel like after, you know, being kicked out of the event? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after after smooth. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. After how you destroyed me. No, but really, uh, I, I'm actually feeling good. You know, after some uh, some losses in tournaments, uh, I'm like a little bit salt if like RNG were not my favorite or whatever. But I guess Toy, I feel like we played a very fair series. It was mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. uh, like both got a little bit lucky at times, but overall it was like a good match where both players played well, and I just like and he has won it, so I'm I'm totally fine. I'm actually, I'm feeling better. Uh, than I do in most tournaments when I lost. Okay, that's cool to hear because uh, as we talked before, those Swiss tournaments, if the new format for major tournaments will be Swiss, uh, I hope that the community will change the perspective from watching on the winner of the event to the whole cut, you know, because uh, we had 200, uh, 200 players here and all of those players well, had to fought in nine rounds. Yeah. If you get to the top 16, that means, well, you're pretty damn good. So, <laughs> uh, how, it is, how it is, it usually in Magic or in uh, other card games, the, all the reports after the tournament are listing all the players from the cut because those players are, are really, well, did well during the tournament. So, their decks uh, had to be good and, well, they had some good strategies. So, it's worth noting all of these players, m worth actually seeing what the players are using, see the meta game, see the bigger picture and not only the dude that was lucky in the final. I mean, yeah. I'm simplifying yeah, it, uh, yeah. uh, but you get my grip, right? So Absolutely. Uh, I hope that the perspective will change and exactly. we'll see more of those Swiss tournaments uh, happening, especially at DreamHack because, mm -hmm. uh, well, DreamHack is known for doing the second one. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Uh, I I hope so too. It because like having these Swiss rounds, like people don't realize, but like a lot of like even I won tournaments where I won like four matches, and mm -hmm. that's it. I went like four zero, and then I'm suddenly a winner of a tournament. It's like a big deal, and but like for this tournament, like going seven and two in the Swiss, or like some people even like eight and one, that like feels. It feels like way more of an accomplishment, even mm -hmm, though mm -hmm. I, even though like you may not be the winner just after that. I feel yeah. I feel a little bad for Hoy, for example, who was like on this six six streak, like just crushing the entire space and like doing very well I in the top sixteen too, and then just like getting getting like his second loss or something and being out of the tournament. Yeah, and because th that's th how it goes. Th the thing is with Swiss as well, it's not like these players can go through and like go eight and one or even mm -hmm. seven two and and avoid. Other good players, it can't yeah. happen. It's not yeah. like, well, I got a good bracket or a, a good group that was easy for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I have mm -hmm. 200 players. Like, uh, there's a lot of like big names combined with strong players as well. And you run into them at some point because if you perform yeah. well, you're against people who have performed just as well. So, yeah. that's a really nice thing that it is really difficult to actually power through and get that many wins. Exactly. And I'm um, really happy to see that purple and green ship are both prevailing and uh, are in the semi final of the. Dreamhack Grand Prix, uh, purple known for being the national uh, national well not na national but yeah, regional American. champion yeah. of no uh, North American cham um, region, and uh, we'll see if he takes the whole prize here. Yeah, so we're gonna see uh, Green Sheep's Secret Paladin versus Purple's Patron Warrior Orange. Do you think Purple's actually won the uh, the initial like opening pick of the, I, of the game? I was talking to Purple before his match, and I suggested to him that he should lead with Druid, and he was like. Hey, I could lead with Druid because it's not like a very powerful deck uh, against the uh, Green Ship's lineup. But Green Ship has opened Secret Pal in almost every single match he played yeah. so far. So I just know that he's gonna do that again, and I'm gonna lead with Patron Warrior, in a, which is a matchup I'm very, very favored in. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna get a win there if I get paired uh, for that matchup. And uh, I'm really happy to see that he did, like his plan is working out. Yeah, I mean, Green Sheep's got a reasonable start, though. Yeah. He does have the Mysterious Challenge already in hand. Blessing of Kings is going to be pretty nice for next turn. Uh, and he's got, uh, again, it's one of those situations where getting a secret early, actually, you can make it work, because now he's got Juggler Minibot, and that was Avenge that went down, I believe. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and the Warrior's going to remove something, right? You kind of have to kill minions to win the game. Yeah, but most of the time. The Minibot with Avenge, drag it on it, mm -hmm. it's a threat to be, uh, you know, intimidated by yeah. Yeah, that's uh, just, uh, like a really huge threat. How Pal like this is a very unfavored like Paladin's very unfavored in this matchup. But like the way you win is, is this y y y <laughs> is exactly what Green Sheep is doing right now. Just uh, like the early aggression Smoke. before uh, before Purple gets to develop his uh, patrons. But 
he just did draw the card that he was looking for. The execute is, um, well, making him hang by the thread because he will be able to finish off the huge 9-8 mini bot just by using uh -huh. a single mana card. And I was wondering, I was just about to say, what do you think of actually using the Whirlwind instead of the Inner Rage there to, to probably escape? But it just doesn't matter if you're just going to draw into another Whirlwind. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. This is <laughs> uh, this is the perfect setup for next turn and the patrons. Oh, and a secret right, a one of secret right before you're about to play Challenger kind of area. Well, the Repentance is uh, not the bad uh, secret because no. it actually plays around pa um, that's patrons. True. Yeah. I, oh, that's I, true. Perfect. Yeah, this this right. is yeah. huge for Green Sheep. I. I, you say how that, that that might actually be like the best draw in Green Chips decks this turn, because if Purple played this patron, that's his whole game plan right there. Yeah, so like he put on Purple's face the yeah. slight frustration. It was the one secret out of them all he didn't want it to be, and uh, yeah, obviously it was that one. So wow, yeah, he went for it. Yeah, I'm it, kind it, of it, surprised. It, it is uh, the odds are with him on going for it, right? Yeah, it it's only one. Uh, uh, one repentance in the deck, and if it's not the, the exactly the one repentance, that is just game over right there. So I don't blame Purple for going for it, but he got very punished for that. Very punished, and he, it's not like he didn't have any kind of other plays this turn, right? He had the Death Spide, he could have set up that for just to kill, to check for for um, for a second Noble Sacrifice, yeah. to check for other potential secrets, so he, he is more certain what can happen next turn, right? Uh, th th then again, uh, w one thing missing here is that it's far more likely if he goes for, uh, if he goes for like, say, Armor Smith coin Death Spite or something, checking mm -hmm. for the Repentance, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not Repentance, and your opponent just plays Mr. Challenger on 6. Yeah. Th then it's repentance. still Repentance. Yeah, then, re then Repentance <laughs> yeah. is definitely up instead of like, it may yeah. not be. And Very good point, th Orange. Then you're in, this, in the same spot, anyway. The girl's going to do a good job of soaking a 10 damage hit, which is quite nice and definitely needed just to slow the game down a little bit because it was one off lethal there if the girl didn't exist. But, but is, there a, is there a way to really... I mean, he can trade into the Mysterious Challenger, right? Yeah. But with re uh, Redemption down, there's now no good targets. I mean, he's got the Whirlwind, I guess, to clear off. But you leave the Shredder up, so this is kind of tough for uh, Purple here. Yeah, also, just, just seeing the tier in the hand yeah, is, is, the, what, the is, is, what really, is what really scares me here, that uh, Tyrion is just one of the most powerful cards against Warrior yeah. uh, overall, and uh, now when, like, you, you can certainly be in this Warrior if you make pa patrons early, but we saw that get denied by the Repentance, so I And think also already seen one execute, right? Yeah, So ex again, exactly. the odds on, on, odds on that, and we've not seen any big card draw turns from Purple either, so it's not like he has a full hand, so Green Sheet's probably feeling there. Pretty confident about his chances in this game. Checks for the secret that's happening, and uh, of course, he will be kinda unhappy about seeing the result of the redemption. Mm. No, it's very important to see what will be happening with uh, that Path of Shredder next turn, because most likely it has to be dealt with the weapon uh, from, from Purple, and that will. Allow him to use seal the deal with the trainer most likely. Is there any option you can just play around it? I don't think so. There's no card draw. If he had one more mana, he could run Grom into Prod the Shield and do it around that way, but uh, sorry, two more. Doomsayer? Mana. No. Oh wow. Not quite. Would be hmm. funny if uh, Purple has one off BJ chair, but <laughs> sadly. I planned this all along. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> This is my answer to Tyrion in this deck. That's three damage uh, additionally, and uh, the minions will spawn on the side of Tyrion, right? Uh, no, no the, the totem side. Oh, no, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's flipped. Yeah, yeah. This it's is working flipped, out. Yeah. <laughs> I did stop for a second then. I was like, do they spawn on the Tyrion side? <laughs> but then again, there's a death bite sitting right there, which uh, will probably clear up those. Uh, Minions, but if, if he can actually, but he can, he, you he have can to attack. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh my oh god! <laughs> yes, it might oh. not change. Does it change? It but yeah, but it it's hilarious. Alive, right? Yeah, it's it, hilarious. it actually keeps him alive. And now you can oh, clear your actually, board. Just look how much this. Just look at the, how much this frothing bristle yeah. during oh us. Oh my god! Wait, wait, wait. Uh, 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 now uh, it's very uh, important uh, to see what damage is. Yeah, uh, he has to count here. 
because I think actually going face will be important. For 3, 5, 7 damage, 11, 15 damage f this turn, and you set up lethal with Rotting Berserker next turn. Uh, isn't it, even if you sacrifice 4 damage into the Flame Tank Totem, it's still... Isn't Grom still lethal next turn? I, I'm not sure. Well, you add um, 7 damage to the Frotting Berserker well, he has to right attack now. He has to clear the Totem and the minions anyway, right? Because uh, this, this yeah, it's just, it it just it the it question is between the totem. Flame Tong and... Uh, attacking the hero. Uh, that's, oh, that's right, the right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because something like Cog Hammer or yeah. uh, uh, th there's other cards that can punish him. Yeah, like Cog if Hammer or Blessing of Kings will punish him if he doesn't kill the if flame. Purple time. takes this game. Uh, look at that. What's uh, a single. Oh, it's just a mini bot. And that's it? Yeah, that's game. That's game. Purple takes the game <laughs> by. Oh, wow. Just by. <laughs> I what, don't know what, what to say. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go back a couple of minutes in time. Wouldn't it be funny if he got BGH <laughs> for this Tyrion? <laughs> yes, it would, and yes, he did. Grisha wow. passed a few. Yeah. few devastated. Feels bad, man. Ah, that oh was incredible. Like, I. I I don't even know what to say. Purple looks very excited about that. We were counting him out almost from like turn three. Yeah, yeah well, but it looks well, very uh, bleak yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. 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 and <laughs> rightly so. <laughs> yeah, like he got attacked with a divine shield meter, but for nine on turn four, <laughs> and they came back and won the game through, oh, wow. through a challenger and through a Tyrion. That's some yeah, impressive that's stuff right there. Yep. Wow, that big game hunter. I mean, that Pulse Shredder, <laughs> that Flame Tone Totem, that <laughs> big game everything. hunter, that two whirlwinds. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the draw into the whirlwind as well was massive. Oh, God. So, what do you think about the, the Tempo Mage matchup over the Druid versus the Patron Warrior? Uh, I, I like this. I don't. I think that Patron is slightly favored against Druid, and uh, Tempo Mage. Uh, I talked with Purple, we, he saw this as a coin flip matchup. It uh, could go absolutely either way. Uh, he he doesn't feel uncomfortable playing Patron against it, but it's still he knows this is a matchup he definitely can lose, whereas against Druid he's like happy to play uh, he's yeah. happy to play against Druid. Okay. And uh, with uh, the start of uh, Fire War X and uh, Despite, I think that uh, Purple is a huge favorite from yeah. the start of this game, at least. But the mage Especially with the... <laughs> <laughs> the mage has his own weapon for a turn. Yeah, but the Shadow strike. War Pain is even more important than the Heroics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I like this. Oh, nice spell slinger. I guess I'll kill it with the card I got. Yeah, yeah. one for one. So, oh, uh, no. now there's a huge, huge um, decision to make. Do I go for the Mirror Entity on turn 3 to just play into a... Uh, let's say potential pile to trigger, but yeah. uh, but I don't think purple will actually do that. Even though uh, he, he, if he, even if he had the uh, the I pile to trigger in his hand, could have just go for the ghoul. Right. I like the entity though because next turn you have portal hero strike, portal flame cannon. You know your mana curve is, is much better next turn. So even though it does just get the ghoul, um, I definitely think that was the right way to go. Oh, he's going. He's going for the. Double draw this turn. I was thinking about is it maybe worth it to keep the weapon still uh, on the board and keep both ghouls on the board just to push the mage to use his removal on your ghoul and play a colored pain next that, turn. That is Baron Ribbon right Ribbon there. there. Your death rattles trigger twice. Are there any notable death rattles in the temple mage? There Pilot are Shredder? piloted shredders, mad scientists, but I don't think it br uh, brings up multiple secrets from green ship stacks anyway. And and that's um, all I can think of, actually. And Ronin. Oh, Ronin, if, if that's played from Green Sheep. I don't think we've seen it. <sighs> yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, we just want to see more piloted Shredder shenanigans. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as if Green Sheep had it. He probably doesn't want that card with Shredder, because look what Shredder did to him last game. He lost He's the game because of the Shredder. Yeah, he should yeah. have played the Yeti. <laughs> He's going to get it twice. It's bad now. Uh, oh, and Dr. Boom. Boom. Oh, that's, that's double boom bots. boom bots is the thing. Oh, I like. really don't need more of that in my life. <laughs> 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 I don't think anyone does, to be honest. I should drag on uh, that's basically the turn for Green Ship. Which will be clean it up nicely with um Depth Spite from Purple allows uh, him to build board with huge amount of minions. Yeah, I think Green Ship's in some serious trouble because my at least my opinion this matchup is the tempo mage like well, one needs to have tempo, but needs to be really fast out the gate to force patron into yeah. an awkward turns, whereas now I mean just look at the board. Like even even rewind one to two turns, there was nothing threatening at all from the mage. I, I think this uh, the game plan you have with this deck is very similar to the one you have with Paladin when you try to beat uh, Peyton Warriors. That you need uh, you need to get aggressive early on, just to 
like patron's weakness is that their removal spells are weapons most of the time mm -hmm. and you take damage from their weapons so if you just like have it, have early aggression and then you know the frost balls and the fireballs that's direct damage you can just kill kill them very early on yeah. and that's the plan but it's really not working out for green chip in this game the difference between having weapons and uh, spells for removal yeah. is the fact that you gain card advantage by sacrificing your life as a resource and uh, this is something unique to only few classes in hearthstone and it's very important to have a way of making a comeback in most of the uh, control decks. So cards like Armorsmith have to be included, or Sheet Blocks, and, uh, well, you know, just basic heals. Yeah, that's a, that's a very smart way to put it, absolutely. Yeah, and this is nice, he just feeds him a patron that he can guarantee killing yeah. as well. And how much armor we can generate yes. right now. Look it's that. a lot. There's a lot of armor and there's a lot of patrons and coming. And if you think about this, so the most efficient way to deal with this board for Green Sheep would be a Flame Strike yeah. out of somewhere. Flame Strike gives him so much more armor, and then even if he does Flame Strike, boom. Yeah. Like, yeah okay, there's that to boom. And then yeah. Dead Spy. And he has a BGH for anything that Green Sheep might do. This is going to be really rough. I don't want to, I don't try not to call games early as we just saw in the previous <laughs> yeah, match. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. This game is Hearthstone. But um, this is definitely going to be very difficult for Green Sheep to, to pull his way out of this one. But he doesn't have a lot of time because the AoE that he AoE that he needs needs to be generated by Spellslinger or F Ethereal Conjurer, which I think he doesn't run. Yeah. So uh, he, he oh had to be... He just... He had to have the second Spellslinger yeah. right now. Yeah, I was going to say, because we've already seen one, right? Yes. So, yeah. But even then, like, you delay the game... But then it's just boom, and yeah, I've got a million armor. That's that's what it would look like on purple side. Especially the ghoul is making it all awkward. It, also, since Froden is not here, I'm gonna call it. We're gonna see uh, Unstable Portal get that win. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do it. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay that has been called. But, but you know, we it's will see. still I hope far so. away, we'll right? See. It's still far away from this possible uh, death win because the uh, purple have two turns of attacking, and that's actually lethal. Just yeah, mm. that'll be it. Going for even more patrons. 12, 13, 17 damage to the face this turn. And the armor just keeps stacking up as well. It's like. Uh, and he has a second patron. He should just equip Death Spike, armor up, hit face. Oh! Lame turn killed him for the haunted. second time. <laughs> Did, did you see Purple sort of go to laugh and then realize that this is maybe kind of harsh and look down straight away? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have laughed. That, that's so typical Purple. <laughs> I think that's a sign that uh, Green Sheep should have been playing Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, oh, those Shredders. I mean, we had one Shaman in the top 16, didn't we? Cranish? Uh, yeah, yes. Cranish yeah. had been playing the Aggro Shaman. People's hero. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch said <that> hero. <laughs> okay, so uh, we can talk <laughs> about. Well, uh, I, I, I was about to go. So, so, so guys, what is the play? Because it seems like um, might be the case of a concede button being pressed this turn, and that looks like a concede. Yeah. Yep, escape left click, which <laughs> makes him concede the game. It's two zero for purple, making a really huge. Um, huge result with the uh, with the patron warrior, which can just take the third game against Druid, yeah. because Druid is not exactly the best deck to play against patrons. No, well, no, no. patron is definitely a uh, favorite in the ma matchup. Yeah, and, and the, yeah, I was just gonna say the, the fact that in the last Terra stand it's a bit different to Conquest, so that the Green Sheep wouldn't have picked his, his lesser deck versus patron, right? So even in Green Sheep's mind, he was like, yeah, the mage is the best chance because that's what you need to do. It's not like Conquest where it's like I'll just pick whatever and hope, mm -hmm, but like. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is going to be really rough, and this is the power of patron when you win the unfavored matchup. Because mm -hmm. like the, the normally there's only like one like really unfavored deck in a lineup uh, against any other deck. Yeah. You know, it's not often that you have like okay, this deck gets stomped by the whole lineup. That doesn't happen very often because it's not the sign of a deck you really want to take to a tournament. If that's the case, exactly. And this is very interesting choice of. Um, minions right now and would like to spend some time explaining that because there are two options either it's uh the taskmaster just to kill the leper gnome which feels like a natural move when you play against an aggressive deck but purple went for the armor smith which allows him to use taskmaster to kill yeah. the darnassus aspirant instantly 
on turn two, which is a huge swing in, in his favor because he, first of all, he gains armor, he deals with Flaris' Asper, and he deals with the additional mana uh, acceleration for the dude, and still has two minions that can deal with the Leper Gnome. Yeah, very, very impressive play there by Purple. Uh, heads up knowing that this Leper Gnome is not really that relevant to this game, whereas a uh, potential turn two Darnassus might swing the game single handedly. Yeah, and he's actually been, he's actually traded the Leper Gnome in, so it's empty board, and now Purple can. I imagine still drop the Acolyte, even drawing the Armor Smith. He's not going to do too much with the Armor Smith this turn, but getting the Acolyte on board with a follow up with the Shredder mm -hmm. is like, it's, it's huge. And it's, it, this is definitely a worry when um, when the sort of defender in, in, in any matchup can actually be more aggressive. That's, that's when you know you're in trouble as the, uh, as the aggro deck. Mm -hmm. But the top deck from Green Ship. Yeah. Kind of makes yeah. a difference. A, 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 per a perfect comment up there, yeah. if, if I may. This is exactly what you want. <laughs> Although, <laughs> if you uh, say so yourself. <laughs> just a death spite from uh, purple here could be huge. And there's no death But the inner rage is something that will help immensely. And I think this should be the turn when you just up the particular seems so how the game is developing. But you have so always the. Flame Tongue Totem Se out of the Shredder. Sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it has to be see. Vitality Totem. <laughs> yeah. Another top deck Inner Rage is not bad at all because that allows ah, you to still what? play this Fell Reaver. How is that even possible? I mean, I was just saying that maybe it would have been better to keep the Inner Rage for next turn because you can <laughs> clear up the Shredder. But yeah, well, if you will draw a second one, sure. Yeah, Who cares? Clear the yeah. right play then. <laughs> yeah, go. F I was thinking, go 5 damage to the face, but he doesn't want to allow the Execute that we play for free, right, with an investment from the hand. So and I don't blame him for turn, trading here. I if Green Sheep already wasn't, like, slightly demotivated at yeah, the previous two matches, this is going to hurt. He can just BGH. And he could have used Execute, but he's going to use yeah. in a Rage. It's uh, you know, uh, a bit, bit easier to just work in, and the Execute's more valuable. But this is definitely uh, painful. One Savage Raw already burned, Living Roots... Druid of the Saber. Those are, those are some really important cards in Green Ship's deck. He needs Druid of the Claw uh, also. And uh, second uh, uh, Fire Reaver. Reaver. Wow, so this is harsh. At so this point, how do you win as the Druid? What does he I need to do? I I think the plan is to draw Dr. Boom at this point and hope that uh, the opponent doesn't have to execute for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, your opponent is sitting at a healthy 31 life. You're not beating him with like the small minions this game yeah. you need something big and sadly like with both your fell reavers gone you don't have that much left yeah, yeah the fell that's true. Are definitely the, uh, the, the the big guys in the deck i mean i knew people were uh, sort of messing around with his ancient shade the seven four on four all oh, right um yeah. in, in this deck because you it can, can it can be burned by the fell reaver yeah, right yeah yeah the curse can be burned which was the first time i played it it did that to me actually which was nice but also it's just another card that you can Druid out on like turn one easily mm -hmm. and can win you the game, but it's quickly. Uh, so I knew a few people tried it, but it just wasn't as good as some of the other cards, like the uh, Mounted Raptor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Mounted Raptor is a really nice card because it single handedly uh, deals with the Pile Trader, which is very nice and still leaves something on board. But now a Savage Roar top deck would be nice 10 damage for free mana. So that's 17 total, right? Mm -hmm. If he had Savage Roar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 17 total and hero power, which will be 18 total. Ah, of course. But it's still, when you look at totals from purple, 35 <laughs> health yeah. is like, hmm. Whatever, 17, 18, whatever. <laughs> he knows that there's no card draw in uh, yeah. in Green Ship's deck. So if he deals with the minions on board, he is perfectly fine with whatever will be happening from each and, draw. And this is exactly why we've just seen Execute on a 2-3, because he just needs to empty the board, then like, how will the Druid ever win by dropping one minion a turn that he can almost certainly deal with? Yeah. He's going to drop the Corsair, just to uh, deal with the one drop that may come out of the blood, uh, blood it's not Blood Fen Raptor. Almost, Ma almost. Mounted Raptor. Yes, the mounted dinosaur. Raptor. Uh, um, yeah, th this is looking pretty grim. For Even the Fell Reaver doesn't really change anything. There's a Savage Roar one turn too late yeah. to gain massive damage, but he doesn't even, even though have the second Fell Reaver either. It oh yeah, right. Around. What yeah, I'm talking about? There's no second Nothing does Reaver. anything here. <laughs> also, very weak drop from the. Oh wait, that was from the Raptor. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't a flame totem. The, 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 the mini shredder. <laughs> so seven damage to the face, armor up, and, and pass the, the turn. And even the girl just. And go. it, yeah, it looks it like it Purple yeah. is locking down his semi-finals with a 
impressive 3-0 run. I mean, Ex everything was changed by that single flame tongue yeah. totem and big game yeah, hunter. Yeah, in, in the Paladin game. That, yeah. that, that was, was crazy. definitely what decided the series. Also, do you guys remember what the result was in uh, Purple's first, uh, in his quarter final? He 3 0 with Patreon. Yeah, Look at that. Yeah, yeah, Look at that. that. So, so far today, he is... <laughs> He is 6-0 with Patron Warrior. Very impressive showing by Purple. Really happy to see him. He's a great friend of mine, someone I've li lived with for quite some time. I'm so happy to see him do well in this tournament because he he hasn't played in like that many tournaments, but every single tournament he's played in, he's been doing insanely well. And, and yeah. he's here as well. So uh, Hello, Purple. How are you hey doing, Purple. man? Hey. Doing I've already What's got my first question lined up as okay, well. Okay, please go. So how much do you like Flame Tongue Totem in the... <laughs> After both of those, now the first one obviously a bit more impactful than the second one, but still. Oh, for it you. didn't involve a top deck <laughs> next turn, right? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, BGH. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, that was some crazy games. I mean, the, especially the first one, and uh, really wanted to to. Uh, I was kind of focusing on it uh, during um, the casting, the play that you made against the aggressive druid, which I'm, I think kind of won you the game. Uh, was the turn one armor smith into the taskmaster instead of the taskmaster yeah, to leopard? You got to set up just to deal with Darnassus. I could have yep. rolled aggressively to set to look for fire war axe, but mm -hmm. if you have an okay hand, might as well keep it. Yeah, yep. exactly. I mean, the, this is a this is a thing that most, I bet most of the new players wouldn't have just yeah. done. I can kill that minion now. I'm going yes, to do it. Yes, I'm like doing yeah. that instantly. I always try to think like at least a turn ahead. Yep. Two, three is better, but uh, I'll just set up to deal with uh, the right. problem that is Darn has. Pro tips too. with purple. S speaking yeah. of it, thinking ahead, we actually fought five turns ahead even in that game because uh, we speak of the arms of Cruel Keep, but you also kept an execute there, which was absolutely, uh, which was uh, really really good. Because y would you mind to explain? Yeah, pretty much usually in the against the aggro druid, uh, if they get uh, a five drop to stick, you lose. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you need something uh, for you, that. You need something for the fell reaver or the druid of the claw, one of the two. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Just taunter of the claw just pushes too, way too much damage in that matchup. It hides mm -hmm. the little guys behind it, so you actually have to keep execute off some Mulgan. Okay, uh, we will not keep you here for you know long, so uh, because you have to rest because uh, because you will be fighting in the finals. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exciting, right? And Very you were playing exciting. against Irosi, which is a new player to the competitive scene, at least the international one. Uh, so I bet you have to make some preparations and uh, you know just adjust your your mindset. Uh, so um, thank you, Purple, for being here with us uh, Thanks, for, the, for the semifinals. And we'll be jumping to a 15-minute break, so uh, break now, just because of what it was said right now, because you know Purple wants to take a rest and be fresh for the finals. And um, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.